Hello everyone. In previous video, we talked about AKS uh, RBAC roles, uh, role, cluster role, role bindings, and cluster role bindings. We tried to understand how exactly Kubernetes RBAC uh, works, how exactly it is. And in today's video, we are going to perform or see all those roles role bindings and things like that uh, and in the next video we are going to integrate or we are going to learn how to integrate because if you remember we also talked about uh, Azure RBAC so that Azure resources would have uh, access accordingly so before we go ahead I forgot to mention in the previous video I would like to add here like what all things uh, it can be done, you know, what all things can be done when you have the uh, admin role or the maximum permission that anyone can has. There are things like our actions that can perform are get, create, update on the Kubernetes cluster, right? Uh, patch and delete. You can compare this get as a get for if you talk about the HTTP method, create is post, update is put, patch is patch, and delete is delete. So this is what the maximum rule would have, like can perform all these actions. So let's go ahead and open the cluster and see a few things. So a uh, few things just wanted to cover quickly to refresh your memory. Uh, before we assign permissions to user with Kubernetes RBAC, we first define permissions as a role, right? Kubernetes roles grant permissions. There is no concept of deny permissions. It's like you're assigning. There's nothing like you're denying. Okay. Now, roles are used to grant permissions within a namespace. If you need to grant permissions across the entire cluster or to cluster resource outside a given namespace, you can instead use cluster roles, right? And cluster role works in the same way to grant permissions to resources, but can be applied to resources across the entire cluster. We talked about it, right? Now, similarly, we have role bindings and cluster role bindings. Once role are defined to grant permissions to resources, you can assign those Kubernetes RBAC permissions with a role bindings. If your uh, AKS integrates with Azure AD, bindings are how those AD users are granted permissions to perform action within the cluster, right? Like this. Now, role bindings are used to assign roles for a given namespace. This approach lets you logically segregate a single AKS cluster with users only able to access the application resources in their assigned namespace. We'll definitely go and check the resource where the name is spaced, which are namespaced and which are not. So if you need to bind roles across the entire cluster or to cluster resources outside a given namespace, you can instead use cluster role bindings. And cluster role bindings works in the same way to bind roles to users, but can be applied to resources across the entire cluster, not a specific namespace. So that's a quick summary, what we try to understand with all these uh, mind map so let's quickly go ahead and try to perform those things, those commands. So we are here, we have this demo cluster and I have the credentials here. Now if I perform kubectl get nodes, it should work. Okay, so we are not running any parts and things like that. We are just going to uh, perform the basic commands, which is uh, as as per the RBAC, because we are understanding the access for the cluster. So, if we see, okay, hold on. If we see config, you know, config view. This is this is uh, this will give you the information about like this is our cluster demo and this is our user 
okay you can see this is the information this is the config okay now if we need to see the cluster role binding we need to run kubectl get cluster role binding this will give us the information of all the cluster role binding which are already present in the kubernetes by default nothing is something uh, nothing that we have uh, customized or created this was there by default okay all right now in the cluster role binding we can see there are different uh, role bindings cluster admin is something that we have been working with so let's quickly clear this out and describe this role so that we can see role binding of course cube cube cdl and cluster binding cluster role binding right and what is the name cluster admin right this is what it is so if we describe this role we can see okay I must have messed with the spelling cluster role yeah the letter B is not working properly Come on. Yes. Now, if if uh, we see here, this is the role cluster role, right? This is the kind, and this is the name cluster admin, and this is the group system masters where it has assigned, right? So that's what it is. We have cluster role, and we have assigned it to the identity like user or maybe the group and this this is the cluster role binding which has the permissions or access on the cluster level not on the namespace level for example uh, if we go ahead and check what all namespace we have kubectl get namespace there are like four namespace we have that you always have in the AKS cluster by default I'm not talking about the name but by default we have these four uh, namespaces now let's check the cube system okay so uh, cube CTL uh, get roles under namespace cube system so these are the roles that you can define that you have in the cube systems namespace okay if you want to see what all roles we have under uh, all we which are namespaced we can simply write cube ctl uh, api resources name spaced is equal to true now this will return all the uh, resources on which you can apply the roles because roles are namespaced not the cluster right cluster roles are uh, not namespaced they have the access to the cluster you can see things like role bindings right here pods specific to the namespace replica set right jobs we have deployment services things like which are namespaced now similarly if we do run the same command with false 
option you'll find all the cluster uh, role which are not namespaced okay you can see that nodes volumes these all are the cluster level resources okay now if you want to describe any role you can simply go ahead pick that role and describe it for example we had few roles under the namespace cube systems there are roles you can see these are the roles let's describe this one Cube CDL mm -hmm. describe role. If you want to know like what is happening with the role and what all information is there, you can pick any role and you can you know just simply describe it. And this is under the namespace cube system. Now we have this information. You can see it can it can get and update these are the verbs the actions that I talked about at the beginning these five actions it can do this role will give you the permissions for get and update cube controller manager right cool now these were the roles that we were describing and checking let's go with the role bindings for example in the namespace cube system we would have role bindings as well which are not just the namespaced but to the entire cluster role bindings name cube system if you enter you'll find those which are namespace is equal to false or cluster level okay now we can describe the role binding with the same role that we had here system right this is the role binding now earlier it was the role Role and role binding is just the permissions. It depends. If it's a role, it's a namespace. If it is a role binding, it's a cluster, right? We know that, right? So instead of role, we only need to write here role binding. Okay, B, 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 B. And now you can see. here we this 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 is applicable to the user and service accounts right and this is the cube system namespace so that's how you can find out or describe the roles and the role bindings inside the Kubernetes cluster. These are the default roles and role bindings. And we once we integrate with Azure AD, then we would have the identity management system for Kubernetes cluster. So whenever a user try to log in, it will, it will get authenticated with Azure AD. And as per the permissions, the identity would be able to perform the action whatever it's supposed to as per the permissions. I know it seems a little hazy, but once we cover the entire access topics, it will start sinking in. Well, thank you for watching and you have a good day.